Okay, hello and uh, welcome to the third video in the command line PHP series. Um, well, fourth actual video, but you should have only watch one of the first ones. So, um, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, input. So, with this uh, instead, like if you remember in the previous part, we got input from the user by having them um, type in like a list of commands, a list of arguments after the name of the script. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this part uh, is making that a little bit less similar to how it works with a browser and um, making it a bit more programmy instead of scripty, if that makes sense. Well, it obviously doesn't, but you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. So what we want to have happen is, when we run the script like so, it's going to prompt us, like, enter a string. And then when we type in a string, it'll sh show up in, on the screen. Um, and then when we press enter, it'll sort of continue using that string. Uh, and it'll be stored in a variable, and it's quite simple. This only takes another uh, two lines. Uh, luckily, again, PHP has made this quite simple for us. So the way we uh, are going to be doing this is by using the constant that is defined. This is a special constant only for the command line interface for PHP. Um, and what it is, is a open file pointer. So you may, not, may or may not have come across file pointers before. But uh, the way you would sort of get ones generally is using the f open function, uh, and then you can use that to sort of read the contents of the file. Um, generally, I have used the file get contents function uh, before, so that's like a uh, that's the sort of more modern way to get the get the contents of a file. But um, before PHP five came out, you had to do f open, f read, f close, um, f read sort of was the same as file get contents, except file get contents opens the file and closes it for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, uh, I won't go into that too much because it's not really necessary to explain it in too much detail. Um, but the way you get the um, input from the user sort of into the terminal is by using the fgets function. So we use fgets, which just gets one line of text, and it, so this function will stop reading from this file pointer when it gets to a new line character. Um, and the, like I said, the file pointer we're going to be using is a predefined constant called std in. I, get, uh, I think that stands for st like standard input, S-T-D-I-N, all in caps. And then we're just going to add a comma and a 1024. Uh, the second parameter here is the maximum length to be read. And this function will stop reading when it either gets to this number of bytes, characters, or when it gets to a new line character. Now, generally, you're not going to be typing in uh, like a th over a thousand characters because that is a ridiculous amount of text. Um, well, it's not that ridiculous; it's quite a lot, quite a lot of text. Um, but just for this, you do have to specify this. If you don't specify it, it defaults to something quite a lot lower. I think I'm not sure. You can check that on php.net/fgets. Oh, uh, fgets, f-g-e-t-s, by the way. Um, anyway. Um, the other thing that I should probably mention is that this function will return the string uh, including the new line, if there is one. Um, so the way we get rid of that is using the trim function, like so. And what that does is removes any white space. Um, so white spaces, spaces, new lines, tabs, that sort of thing. Thing that's not a character, basically, um, from the end and beginning of a string. So it, well, it trims it, it trims off the white space from either end. Um, and once we've got this, this will actually return um, what they typed at the command line. So we can just store this in a variable, let's call it input, like so. And then just while we're testing here, we're going to do echo, spelt right, um, there we go. Oh, okay, okay, echo. I can type echo input. Oh, okay, in put new line. There we go. And what this should do is just print back exactly what the user types in. So we can test this now by going to our terminal, running the script, and you can see that it seems to have sort of frozen or crashed. What's actually happening here is that it's waiting for us to type something and press enter. Uh, and this is sort of the reason you have these special stdin constants, because this is a, this is a file pointer that will never sort of close, it will never re return anything until you've typed something and press enter. So what we can do is type something and press enter. 
and you can see that we get that repeated straight to us. So that means that it has been read correctly and it's basically worked. Um, so obviously at the moment this isn't very useful and it's also not very user friendly. So what we can do is just sort of tidy it up a little bit by coming back to our script. And just before we read the input, we can do um, echo enter something and then a colon like so. Um, and not a new line there because we don't want to have it on the next line. Um, after we've read the input, before we output it, um, so basically here, we're going to do echo new line, input new line. So it'll be input with a new line either side of it. So this is going to be a bit more user friendly. Uh, and if we run this again now, you can see we get this little prompt. So enter something, and whatever they type here, and press enter, it will sort of be shown up on, ah, oh, I should have two lines at the end. It'll be shown, there'll be a line break and then the whatever they typed will show up. So just to make this um, similar to what we did <coughs> excuse me, in the first uh, video, we can have this return an MD5. Because uh, the now the input variable is just a string, we can just MD5 this. <coughs> okay, get that, there we go. Uh, and also I'm going to add another new line afterwards to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and you can get a bit more sort of fancy with this if you like, but th this will basically do for now. So if we go back to our terminal, run the script again, it tells us to enter something. If we sort of, we could leave this for as long as we like, and it would just still keep there with that little flashing box uh, saying enter something. So if I just type in pickle, you can see we get this MD5 hash output. Um, and that's basically everything you need to know for reading input from the um, actual terminal window instead of passing it in via arguments. So if you're, um, you could like use this as a prompt for a password or a username or something. Or it's well, you can, yeah, uh, you can see it's sort of getting a little bit more towards things that you couldn't just do in a web browser now. Anyway, which is sort of the point I'm trying to get to here. Anyway, so that's the end of this video. So thanks for watching, and um, yeah, that's it. Join me for the next one if you want to. <laughs>